You either use the internet for fun or you use the internet to grow. You're here to grow. Welcome to TRS Clips. What's going to happen in the next five to ten years for India? Okay. And I've asked a lot of people this question. I feel you're the right person to ask. So next, uh, in the zero to five year horizon, I think we are very clear. We are going to build out world class infrastructure. Okay. So we are here in Mumbai. Just look around you. This now, by the way, has the largest concentration of cranes anywhere on the planet. More mm. than Shanghai, Beijing, or other places people tell you about. Largest concentration of cranes in the world right now, Mumbai. And you can see it. Just go to a tall building. Just look at the amount of construction that's happening. We are building a massive metro system all in one shot. Uh, I think the, the radial line that goes from Kolaba to uh, our Kaf Parade all the way to Seeps, uh, that on day one, is going to be one of the most crowded metro lines in the world. Um, similarly, we're building the coastal road at the same time. We are connecting through to the mainland through the um, uh, harbor link. There is a brand new airport coming out on the other end, which will be significantly larger than the existing one. So imagine the amount of infrastructure, and this is just Mumbai. And you know, in Delhi also, we're building a massive new airport, and other things are going happening all the country. So build out world class infrastructure, um, and so that's. Uh, that's the first thing that we are doing and, 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 and that's already in the way. This, but if you're taking the five to 10 year horizon, there are a bunch of things we need to do. The top in my list, other people may have other lists, I'll tell you my list. Top in that list has got to be, we've got to fix our legal system. Uh, you may be aware, every family, everybody who's listening here, somewhere in your family, extended uh, family, there'll be a case that's stuck there Forever and ever and ever. Tariq pe tariq. Tariq pe tariq. Now, this is going to be ridiculous. Mm. You can't have a legal system like this. Mm. If you want a modern economy, you want delivery of justice, you want enforcement of contracts, this is ludicrous. We've got to fix this. So in my top of list of things we need to solve in a decade uh, horizon, is got to be this. And it will take many uh, steps. Uh, there will be friction between the judiciary and the government over different ideas of what needs to be done, et cetera. But we not, we've got to get on and do this. This, is, this cannot be delayed. The second thing we need to, uh, big thing we need to do is to fix our uh, bureaucracy and administrative system. So <clears throat> the bureaucracy and administrative system is a lot better than it used to be 20 years ago. But still, the, you have to understand that the origins of this system and the way the architecture of the system is set up is set up for something else. So where did our bureaucracy and administrative system come from? It came from the colonial period. What did they want to do? Their main job was really controlling the population. There were a tiny number of uh, British uh, administrators and their job was to make sure that they controlled the system as far as they could. Uh, and uh, that was the main thing. Now independence happens. Now the agenda should sh now shift to development, growth, etc. But we decide to do this uh, we decide to become a socialist economy. And remember, I told you in the beginning about all those wise people sitting in planning commission. Well, how do you make sure that everybody does all the things those wise men want to do? Well, therefore, you have, in the socialist system, you have to perpetuate these controls. So you created license, permit, Raj. Licenses have to be given. I'll give you a license, you do this. Yeah, I'll give you a permit, you do this. And so that architecture of licenses and permits meant that this bureaucracy continued to basically have a mindset of control. Now, 1991 happens. Suddenly, the bureaucracy it has all these powers taken away from it. And over time, over the last 30 years, these powers are slowly, slowly whittled away. So just a few years ago, you wanted some passport or anything, you had to go to a gazetted officer to get some signature. Why do you need to go to this gazetted officer? Again, idea of control. Mm. Now what has happened is that in the last 30 years, all the progress has happened by essentially withdrawing these powers from the uh, bureaucracy. But it has not been done by reforming the bureaucracy. The bureaucracy even today is set up for control. It just has fewer things it's allowed to control. So it's withdrawn its powers, but it has not improved the bureaucracy itself. Now we need to improve the bureaucracy to do the things it should do. So far we are stopping it from doing the things it shouldn't do. Now you should get it, design it to do the things it should do. Which are? Which are, you know, delivery of municipal services, for example. Right? <clears throat> bureaucracy should be focused on uh, getting your roads, making sure your water supply comes on time, these kinds of issues. Uh, get Making sure the health system works, make sure the, the government schools, uh, the teachers turn up on time. And so all those things, that requires a service 
uh, uh, system, not a instead of a control mindset, you need a service mindset. Now that requires redesigning the administrative system itself. There's no point in blaming an individual here. That's not the problem. We always keep, oh, if only the IAS officer, IPS officer was better trained, it will lead to a solution. No, it will not lead to a solution. Because the tools he's given the, in the universe in which he or she functions is set up for doing something else. There's no point in blaming the individual uh, bureaucrat. Blame the system. Yeah, you have to change the system now. And there are remarkable people who are still doing great things inside this system. And by the way, also in the judiciary, there are people who are delivering great things. But there's no point in asking an individual judge because the system itself is set up in a bizarre way. And uh, very often, you know, this whole system of uh, you simply allowed to appeal at every stage against whoever. So even if a judge gives a great judgment, you can appeal against it. So this is go on forever. So the system in both judiciary and administration now needs to be changed. Uh, I think this whole thing was set up in the 19th century. We are now well into the 21st century. We now need to create a system for the 21st century. Okay. Uh, come back on the show soon, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to TRS Clips for more.